Hello everyone, this is Dragons After Dark, and welcome to the Pet Battle Report, your weekly news and information source for all things Pet Battle. Today we're going over some of the new pets that dropped on the 10.1.5 PTR today, and a change that'll hopefully stay that way. Before we get into that though, let's go over everything going on this week on Azeroth and Beyond for your pets. Heading into Shadowlands, our current Assault on the Maw is with the Kyrian, which offers us time to continue a Sly Fox achievement progress for the pet Sly and a chance at the Sinfall Screecher treasure and the Copperback Etherworm from the Assault Cache. On the Friday evening reset, this will switch over to the Necrolord Assault, giving you the chance to craft Lil A-Bomb, who seems to have lost bits of themselves everywhere, and a chance to receive fodder from the Assault Cache. Moving on to BFA, the islands for the week are Havenswood, Yorindal, and Snowblossom Village, while the Salvage are Elemental, Molten K, Skittering Hollow, and Whispering Reef. As for the Enzoth Assaults, he's hanging out in Oldham this week, which means we have a chance for the Pyre of the Amalgamated 1 bonus objective to spawn which spawns a rare, who in turn has a chance to drop the Wicked Lurker battle pet, so keep an eye out on the daily reports to see if the pyre is up. And the time has come, once again, to level all your pets. The weekly reset brings the pet battle bonus week, and the sign of the critter offers a 100% increase on pet experience, so it's the perfect time to tackle that queue. If you'd like to know what repeatable trainers to look out for this week, head over to Zufu's power leveling guide to find out which ones are great for maximizing the use of the bonus XP. It will also offer the top leveling strategies for each of the fights, tips and tricks, and links to non-repeatable tamers as well as other useful guides. In addition to this, Sunday the 11th is Super Squirt for EU in the Wad Garrison. Super Squirt is one of those magical days during the Pet Battle Bonus Week where Squirt is up in your Wad Garrison Menagerie, and it offers a useful, repeatable battle that does very well in leveling your pets, and has a nearby free heal. Though much emphasis is placed on Super Squirt, there are plenty of viable leveling fights from the repeatable tamers listed in the Power Leveling Guide. If you don't have your garrison up to par for Squirt, you'll likely still get a fair few tamers that will do nicely in Squirt's stead. I'll link the Zufu's power leveling guide as well as the page for all of Zufu's Squirt strategies. In addition to the pet battle bonus week, the Dark Moon Fair is in town until the 10th at 11.59pm Pacific. The Dark Moon Fair offers 24 pets, both combat and non-combat, from a variety of sources. I'll link the Zufu's article on how to get all those pets and best wishes to those still collecting. On the 25th, the Greedy Emissary event began where treasure goblins spawn from portals in the Dragon Isles and the capitals until June 14th. One of those rewards the goblins will drop is a pet, Belial, which is arguably a more useful version of the much-beloved Ball. It has a really good drop rate, so don't miss out on this awesome pet. Also, don't forget, if you still need to complete your Rock Lover achievement to get the Battle Pet Pebbles, Rem T and I hold on to the daily so we can share it with others. Just hop on Discord and ping Rem T for EU and me for NA. Keep in mind, you do need to have the Therizane dailies unlocked, and you can't be in Deep Home when we share it. And that's it for the weekly news. Now for what we saw for Battle Pets with the new build today. The Time Rip vendors got their respective pets, which means we finally got sources for some of those cute pets that were data mined, plus a couple we haven't seen yet. We got the Briarhorn Hatchling, which is a Triceratops pet that looks to have some troll type feathers for flair. We don't have the skin yet, just the naked model, and it's set as a mechanical pet at the moment. It'll be on the Olderoth vendor, which is connected to the Titan Utopia timeline. That adorable little infernal model is called Doom Rubble, and they will be the blue variation. This pet will be on the Azerath vendor, which is labeled as the Burning Legion timeline. Despite what some people guessed, Gildan will not be the BlizzCon pet for its triumphant return this year. This power-hungry murloc is sold by the Azmurloth vendor, who is part of the murloc version of Azeroth. Our buckfanged buddy is named Jeepers, and they hail from the Black Empire timeline, also known as Azkaroth. 
Another new pet is Killbot 9000, which will be on the all caps Azeroth vendor, the timeline where machines rule. As you can imagine, this pet will be mechanical. It's another naked model, so we don't know exactly what it'll look like, but if its moveset stays the way it is, we'll be seeing another pet with supercharge and ion cannon in separate slots. Next up is Inruby, another unexpected pet in this build. It is a Nerubian spider pet and will be sold on the Asmorn vendor from the Lich King timeline. And just a heads up for anyone listening, I faced the Lich King in a time rift today and that dude is way overtuned. If they expect it to be a single player thing, and since nobody else showed up to fight him with me and there were other people doing the time rift, I'm assuming it is. Also, when I died I ended up in Westfall so that was fun getting back to the Dragon Isles. Last but not least for the Time Rift vendors, we have the Obsidian War Whelp, who is our steampunk dragon from the Warlands vendor, which is a dystopian timeline of Azeroth. It seems in the multiverse of WoW, these people put the capital War in Warcraft. As a bonus, there was a pet data mined with the Secrets of Azeroth event coming in August, I think is when the WoWhead article said it showed up on the calendar. We don't have a lot of info on this event yet, but the pet Tobias is the same Mastiff model as Grumpy, but it's brown, and will be rewarded for the Community Rumor Mill achievement as part of this event. And that's it for the new 10.1.5 pets. Before we get into what I hope will be a change that we all hope stays, let's go over our Battle Pet of the Week selected by the Random Pet feature on Warcraft Pets, the Azure Crystal Spine. The Azure Crystal Spine was introduced with Dragonflight and is a wild pet. It's similar to the Porca Pet model, but its spines are made of blue crystals. Its flavor text reads, These creatures are highly sought after by hunters looking to make weapons from the sharp crystals on its back. I'm pretty sure it was one of my top tier models we took a look at on the alpha, and I think they are a lovely addition look-wise to the roster. Despite it being a wild pet, it only comes in one breed, which makes things easy for everyone looking to use it in a battle. Because it's so new, it hasn't had a chance to stretch its legs as far as strategies are concerned, but it's one of only two magic pets with crystal overload, which might be nice when combined with bite and facing critters, and it's currently the only magic pet with crystal prison. Which won't do so well against critters, but is still super handy in other situations, even more so since the Azure Crystal Spine has Power Ball, which can make it faster than the enemy and able to time Crystal Prison when it's best for you. And that's it for the Azure Crystal Spine. Now this is just a quick little update, but on the PTR it looks like the world quests are rewarding their usual amount again, even if you haven't completed the Whelp Daycare dailies. So, keep your fingers crossed, this was either unintended in the first place, or someone has been lurking in various areas and realized this wouldn't be a great change and reversed it. Either way, we'll have to wait until it goes to live to see if the Whelp Daycare dailies will or will not impact our charm amounts. And with that, that happy bit of news, that's going to be it for me today. Don't forget to keep an eye out for the daily reports for your pet leveling opportunities this week, and I'll have all the pertinent links available on my tweet for the podcast, as well as in the description once it's uploaded to Spotify and YouTube. Until next time, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day or night, and happy battling!